call this um, board meeting for the uh, District 128 uh, regular board meeting, December 9, 2019, to order. Um, let's uh, stand for the pledge. Welcome everybody. I am not Pat Rudy. He could not make it tonight, so I'm covering for him. Um, <clears throat> can we have a roll call, please? Oh, I'm Jim Batson. Roll call. Uh, Jim Batson. Here. Don Carmichael. Here. Pat Rudy. Lisa Hessel. Here. Kevin Huber. Here. Karen Lundstedt. Here. Casey Rooney. Here. Okay. Uh, for the record, Pat Rudy is not in attendance, but everyone else is, so welcome. Uh, just run down the agenda real quick. Uh, we'll have some uh, invitation for public comment. Uh, please limit uh, your comments to three minutes or less if you care to speak. Educational presentation, we have some student recognition, we have the president's report, um, stu uh, superintendent's report, uh, consent vote agenda, which was reviewed earlier this evening in the committee. Um, program and Personnel Committee, we have a, some policies we're going to review there, and uh, Facilities and Finance uh, Committee, uh, Chairman Huber will be uh, guiding us through three items there, and then do we have anything from the CEDAW tonight? Yeah, that's good. Okay, and I will make one brief comment on the Illinois Association of School Boards, and that should do it for our meeting. So we'll start out invitation for public comment. Would anyone like to address the board? Okay, hearing none, we're moving on. We have an educational presentation. Uh, student recognition. Uh, yeah, it's a student recognition. Good evening, John Gilliam, uh, principal of Vernon Hills High School. Happy to be here tonight. Tonight we have the privilege of recognizing a couple athletes, one from uh, Vernon Hills High School, one from Libertyville High School. Uh, We'll start at Vernon Hills. We had an uh, enjoyable fall, and uh, one of the pleasures of uh, our fall was watching our football guys compete, and the young man that we get to honor tonight was one of the bright spots on that program. Um, interestingly enough, when we opened this high school back in 1999-2000, uh, and started our football program the year after, this young man was running around on the sideline as his dad was uh, coaching here as our first varsity head football coach. So uh, I, I've known uh, him for quite some time, uh, but got to know him even better this year as he transferred in to Vernon Hills High School. So uh, I'm gonna invite Coach Bill Bellacomo up to talk a little bit about uh, Mr. Munkin. We can uh, talk about the stats first. Tom has some pretty impressive stats. He led Lake County in passing with uh, 1,972, 79 yards. 19 touchdowns, uh, but the most impressive thing I think we need to talk about is, that, is after we started off 4-1, and one, then we, we got the second half of our season, and really we were banged up. We went through three running backs, we had no running game left, but uh, and, and it was really no uh, disguise of what we were going to do coming forward. We were throwing the ball every, every play, uh, trying to get the six wins. And Thomas, uh, his competitiveness and the way he handled things was unbelievable. He was a true leader of the team. He gave it everything he had. And I think that going forward, his best football is ahead of him. He's a competitive uh, kid who, who loves the game of football and loves to win. And uh, he made all conference, CSL, all state, and all area for Daily Herald. So, uh, Thomas Munkin. Thomas is uh, still looking at it. Uh, we're looking through all the college options. There's been many schools coming in here to look at him. Uh, I mean, like I said, he's still growing since the season, and I think uh, his best football is ahead of him, and a, a program that gets him uh, moving forward is going to be lucky. Thank you. All right, let's get a picture. Good. You guys good? You get the pictures you want? 
Good evening, I'm Tom Colentis, uh, principal of Libertyville High School, and I get to introduce um, an, an extraordinary uh, wildcat. And one of the things um, that's going to be very apparent when you meet Mickey is you're going to say, Dr. Clintus, you and Mickey have so much in common. Um, we both played soccer. Mickey um, is, is a member of our varsity soccer team. We both love Libertyville High School, and we both have an amazing set of hair. So an amazing head of hair for both of us, right, it is um, definitely what we're, we have in common. So I'm a big fan of Mickey Riley, and to present him and talk about him tonight is our varsity soccer coach, Kevin Thunder. Good evening, uh, Kevin Thunholm. Uh, I've had the uh, honor of coaching Mickey for four years. He, uh, he, I was a freshman head coach when he came in. Um, so I, I've kind of grown up with Mickey. He's taught me a lot as a coach and as a person, as a father. Um, super excited to have him uh, for all four years be part of this program. Um, stats, 42 goals, a bunch of assists, um, but the things that everybody didn't see were his leadership, uh, his commitment to the, to the community. He, uh, he, he was all conference two years in a row, all sectional, all region. Um, recently he was named um, Player of the Year for the Daily Herald. He had an article in there, my son actually was in there, talking about Mickey. Uh, we had GLSA night. And uh, my son went up to him, and Mickey walked him out of the field. And after that, he came up to all his friends. He's like, I got to touch Mickey. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? It's, it's Mickey. You know, it's, it's, it's just Mickey. And the way that these little kids look at, at, at him and, and the other guys on our team, was, it's amazing. Um, because they were passionate about the community, the school, his family. Um, it's, it's everything um, that we want in a, in a student athlete makes me proud to be a coach at the school. Um, he's had every kind of uh, accomplishment you can of a soccer player, uh, but more importantly, he's a quality, quality student, quality young man, and it was a pleasure to coach him. So, Mickey Riley. report. That's my report. I have nothing to report, but these wonderful students from our two high schools do have lots to report, so I'll hand it over to them. Congrats. Congrats. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Congratulations to the girls swimming dive team who qualified five swimmers and two divers to the IHSA state finals on November 22nd and 23rd. Cougars diving at the IHSA state finals were Allie Landis and Avery Longdon. Cougars that swam at the IHSA state finals were Casey Crafty, Izzy Ramos, Sasha Skatchkov, Claudia Yoon, and Emma Zhang. Congratulations to Allie Landis for taking sixth in diving and Casey Crafty for taking seventh in the 500 free and ninth in the 200 free. What a wonderful end to the season. Boys basketball captured second place in their Thanksgiving tournament at Northridge Prep. Good luck to them as they continue their season. Cougar Class Act recipients for December re were recognized at a breakfast on December 6th. Students are recognized for outstanding character and demonstrating our school's values. Great job to Quinn Sheehan, Zoe Hant, Bianca Uka, Yashley Alvarez, and Gillian Johnson, and Selena Gomez, Vincent Rodkey, Ashley Murphy, Anthony Zarate Espinoza, Sean Rockelman, Nicholas Bees, Brianna Engelkmeyer, and Am Aman Palova and Xander Schwartz. The D128 Special Olympics floor hockey team won the state championship on Saturday, November 16th at Northeastern Illinois University in Chicago. The Storm beat Shabona Park 3-1 in the semifinals and went on to defeat Douglas Park 8-3 for the championship. Congrats to them. On Tuesday, November 26th, the VHHS Visual Art alumnus and the 2017 Art Award winner, Alex Kinderman, visited VHHS pause classes to share his experience pursuing a culinary arts career. Kinderman earned his culinary arts associate's degree through Kendall College, KC, in Chicago. Chamber Choir has been very busy lately. They sang on WGN Radio Friday morning, then at Hawthorne Schools, the D128 District Office, a senior home, and then had their big magical dessert, each time greatly entertaining their audience. This morning, ARC tutors handed out candy canes and informational flyers to announce upcoming study sessions before finals. Students are encouraged to visit the ARC to get help with any final exam study guides they need to complete or if they have any questions they want answered. ARC tutors also spoke to freshman transition classes to share advice about how to best prepare for their first round of final exams. Congratulations to the Vernon Hills Science team for taking second place at the Science Opportunity Test held at the Milwaukee School of Engineering on November 26th. In addition, Itamar Schifrin took third place in the general science category and second place in biology. For theater, the Vernon Hills production of The Old Man and the Moon, which was co-written by a Vernon Hills alum, Matt Nuremberger, has been selected to perform at the Illinois High School Theater Festival in January. Congratulations to all the students who are going downstate to represent the school with this fantastic show. Our eSports team made it to the state finals for the state playoff series for the first time ever, which is very exciting, so good luck to the team. Vernon Hills celebrated the many talents of its student body with the Vernon Hills annual variety show. Each act was very impressive and unique, but one act really stood out in the minds of the audience. And by the way of the vote, um, the mashup of Found and Tonight by performers Neil Mehta, Spencer Lane, Kristen Kai, Ashley Sawa, Alex Tanisuk, and Luke Brand were this year's winners. All of the proceeds of this year's variety show went to our sister school in Uganda. And several students and staff met early in the morning last week to Skype with sponsor students at the St. Jerome School in Uganda. Since the trip was canceled last summer, it was the first time many in the community have had a chance to talk to the family in Uganda. Congratulations to the Vernon Hills media students that placed second in the third annual silent film festival held at the San Filippo Estate in Barrington. Their film, The Duelist, will be available after volunteer composer Jelani Eddington creates the original score. This film fest held each year on the first week in November is open to the public. The Duelist was written, conducted, and directed by Vernon Hills students James Atchell. Sebastian Dominic was the director of photography. The group of 14 students who worked on the production included recent Vernon Hills graduates and current students from VHHS and LHS. Senior Drashika Asher and sophomore Aditya Sabarwal were named the Vernon Hills Prudential Spirit of Community Award honorees. They each received a certificate of achievement at school on November 25th. The honor was granted as part of the Prudential Spirit of Community Awards, a nationwide youth volunteer recognition program sponsored by Prudential Financial in partnership with the National Association of Secondary School Principals. These two students' applications will now advance for state-level judging in the 2020 Prudential Spirit of the Community Awards. Prudential will announce Illinois Top Youth Volunteers of the Year on February 4, 2020. 
The Vernon Hills Holiday Concert featuring all the choirs and the symphony orchestra is on December 11th, 2019 at 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. We hope that many will take the opportunity to hear our amazing students. <coughs> Okay, so um, right now in LHS, it's serve season, so students are working on giving back to the community. This past Wednesday, we had the annual WISH dinner closing out our annual WISH project. Each second period class is assigned a family in need this holiday season, and they raise money, buy gifts, and wrap these gifts for all of the families. This service project is an amazing event that brings students together for an, an, an incredible end product. All of the classes, Spent me a lot of time before second period on Wednesday wrapping gifts, and these gifts were brought to the cafeteria. That night, which families came to LHS for dinner to, and to open their presents. Families benefit immensely from this event every single year, and LHS hopes to bring cheer to their holiday season. The 2019 um, canned food drive is complete, and the numbers are in. We broke last year's record with over 13,000 canned food items, compared to last year's total of 10,000 cans. This is such an amazing event, and we will provide, and it will provide to so many families in Lake County. Students make such a great impact every year, and we are happy to keep the tradition going. Advocates and Students Ending Slavery are partnering for the third year to host Dressember. Every day of December, students will either be wearing a dress or a tie to raise awareness for human trafficking. They are also raising money for the Dressember organization, which helps victims of human trafficking get back on their feet. All of the participants are super excited and it's always fun to see people dressed up in the hallways. Um, moving on to college, three LHS senior students signed letters of intent to colleges all over the U.S. Yeah, 13. 13. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and right now the CRC is hosting an event about finding and winning scholarships. In addition, um, they'll be revealing LHS's scholarships tonight. Um, yeah, so we actually had 13 students sign letters um, to commit already. That's okay though. That's okay. <laughs> We're really happy to be able to correct that with more students. Um, so a couple of school ongoings. Um, after falling lead paint chips were discovered again in the main gym, um, the district was able to act very quickly and close it off and handle the situation in just a couple of days. Um, the dance team expressed some frustration at the event happening again because the timing overlapped with when they were hosting a large tournament and they wound up having to hold the event in the notably smaller West Gym. Um, and the girls basketball team was also disrupted in their practice schedule and they wound up sharing a gym with the boys varsity basketball team in order to avoid the main gym. Um, but we would really like to thank the district and all those who worked to repair the issue for making the gym safe to use again and for allowing the various teams and gym classes to resume their normal activities. Um, with writing, we have two LHS students who um, submitted writing pieces, um, and they will be published in DePaul University's new Best of Illinois High School writing book. Um, we would like to congratulate sophomore Madison Wilson and junior Avery Bang for their accomplishments. Uh, moving on to health and wellness, um, the Life of a Wildcat event called the Fall into Winter event was a huge success on Friday, November 15th, <coughs> with over 60 stu students attending. It was a night filled with fun games led by upperclassmen and seniors, as well as short speeches from the seniors at the end for all of the underclassmen. The night was all about bringing everyone in LHS closer together, no matter what club or sport students may belong to. It also showed a healthy and safe way of being able to have fun on a Friday night um, with people that um, students may know already or maybe are getting to know through the events. Uh, we also introduced our new therapy dog this month. Her name is Wrigley, and everybody in the school is beyond excited that she is there. Throughout the month, she has been getting introduced to the school and the students around her, and she has been adapting very well. Um, last Friday, she, we all celebrated her third birthday, um, and she is just such a warm sight for everybody at school, and we're very grateful that she was able to be with us. Um, like a Wildcat also spoke to um, freshmen in Lake Crew uh, about the importance of sleep on various aspects of their life, whether that be day-to-day -day functioning or with athletic performance. Link Crew leaders also spent one week trying out a sleep experiment to tell their freshmen about how they feel it impacted their sleeping lives. Um, so leaders would try things like reflecting on gratitude before going to bed, setting up a regular lights off time, or limiting their caffeine intake. In Fine Arts, we have the student directed one act play that was last Friday and Saturday, and the show was absolutely amazing. This show has over 70 student actors, and it makes it the biggest involved show throughout the year in terms of acting. This show is entirely directed and produced by students. 
The LHS Orchestra recently had their annual concert with the middle school orchestra. When we spoke with members of high school orchestra, they voiced that it was fun to be able to see their old orchestra directors and worked with younger students. Um, for I only A, we have 13 LHS music students from orchestra, band, and choir who will represent Libertyville at the <coughs> Illinois Music Education Association All-State Conference in January. Um, the senior Noah Kubling received second place honors in violin for the Illinois American String Teachers Association and will complete this at Illinois State University for his honor. Uh, we had the pop-up art show um, last Friday and it was an absolute hit showing numerous student art pieces during lunch throughout the day last Friday. Students in glass art, ceramics, 2D studio, printmaking, digital art, and AP art were able to include their pieces and students were able to sell their art um, and a couple of favorite interactive stations included live, live figures, drawings, and pottery wheels were also there. The lead paint in the main gym um, posed a slight concern to the department leading up to the date, but fortunately everything was resolved on time. For clubs, we have the debate tournament. Um, the debate team went to Belvedere North for a tournament on Saturday. Uh, Maddie Kuntz played, uh, placed fifth speaking and fifth overall in the Varsity Lincoln Douglas, Douglas Circle. Freshman Nick Indigo placed second overall in the Novins Lincoln Douglas um, circuit, and we're so proud of them and the whole team. Um, Model UN, um, the, the Model United Nations Club, went to the Chicago International Model UN Conference this weekend and had a great time. 22 members were able to attend, and they participated in a wide ranging committees, such as International Press Delegation and United Nations General Assembly. Two students received awards for their performance and had a great experience. The Scholastic Bowl members competed in a tournament against LHS teachers for a fun-filled afternoon um, last week also. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Lots of great information, but I'm sure the superintendent's report is up next and there will be even more good news. Well, there's always more good news at District 128, Libertyville and Vernon Hills High School. But um, just for the community, um, every month, the six student board representatives meet with one of the members of the board, typically uh, Dr. Grudy when he can make it, and uh, Mrs. Rooney uh, came in his stead today, uh, as well as Dr. Colentis and Dr. Gilliam and myself, and we have an opportunity to uh, break bread with our uh, representatives and uh, share uh, a number of things along the way. So uh, we really appreciate uh, the work that you're all doing as board representatives. We want to make sure that we say that publicly. So they're really great. Okay? All right, more good news. The following VHHS students received the December Ellen Swift Cougar Class Act Award. Quinn Sheehan, Zoe Hent, Bianca Yuhuka, uh, Yashali Alvarez, Jillian Johnson, Selena Gomez, Vincent Rodkey, Ashley Murphy, Anthony Zarate Espinosa, uh, Sean Rockelman, Nicole Brees, uh, Brianna Engelmeyer, uh, Iman Palova, and Xander Schwartz. The following LHS <coughs> students were recently named True Wildcats. Uh, in November, Devjani Maitra, Alexander Burns, Emma Iserman, Kath, Catherine Meyer, Scott Creel, Liam Gaden, Reeve uh, Lounsbury, Catherine Fosmone, <coughs> Gabby Warren Wagner, Laura Erdman, and Christina uh, Tadori Posa. In December, Nicholas Mauer, Adam Buer, <coughs> uh, Timothy Gustafson, William Bukert, Liam Harrison, Zoe uh, Boilu, uh, George Harvey, Lauren Klainos, Lauren Burns, Matthew Romaker and uh, Riley Curland, Jamil Myrick, Daniel Granados, and Sarah Wetterling. So congratulations to all of those students. <coughs> the following D128 Thundercat fencers have qualified for Junior Olympics to be held in Columbus, Ohio in February 2020. LHS sophomore Natalie Iceberg, first place in women's saber. VHHS senior James Altschul, second place in men's saber and VHHS sophomore Brianna Griziak, third place in women's sabers. So 
congratulations to those students. LHS senior Drew Hopkins won second place in the <coughs> Voice of Democracy essay contest. The theme of this year's contest was What Makes America Great? At the annual journalism convention last month, LHS DOI students participated in national student media contests, which are on-site competitions uh, in a wide range of areas. Molly Buford received an honorable mention for news writing, and Mara Gregory received a superior, the highest designation possible, for literary, literary magazine poetry. On the regional level, the organization KEMPA which is made up of schools in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin, gave an all-Kempa all scoring, the highest possible rating, to the 2018-19 DOI magazine and website. DOI submitted 28 pieces in the individual category, and 22, nearly 80%, received rankings, including five honorable <coughs> mentions, seven excellence, three superiors, and seven best of show. Congratulations to DOI staff members and their advisor, Michael Gluskin. Okay, um, on the superintendent's report as well tonight is uh, speaking of the LHS uh, main gym repair work. Um, the current work uh, is three phases in the gym and we just wanna review that with the public again. We put that information on. Uh, the first phase is the work that was really just completed which was to take down the old duct work, uh, which was peeling and the um, HVAC elbows coming from uh, the ceiling to make way for phase two, which will be the installation of the new fabricated elbows and what is called duct, duct sock um, tubing, uh, which will uh, now be the venting for uh, the gym. That has been ordered. Uh, we're in a production run and will be installed. We're assuming, we believe, materials will be here before the winter holiday and uh, the company, installation company, will be able to work around um, existing activities that we've got planned in the gym for athletics uh, over the break. Uh, phase three, uh, just so we're doing a holistic look and we're trying to avoid to the best of the ability, our ability uh, having that problem again, uh, we'll be taking a look at uh, all the existing uh, remaining paint in the gym, particularly the metal ceiling panels uh, in, in the top of the gym on the ceiling and uh, the metal st steel support beams to see what we're dealing with in terms of paint there right now that is not peeling, but we could suspect that some years later it might start peeling, uh, and to see uh, what options uh, we might have there. So we'll be sharing that information uh, with the board um, you know, over the next few meetings, and then uh, having some discussion with the board uh, regarding on how to proceed there. The idea is if we can uh, leave from the ceiling up uh, in, in the gym uh, in a position where um, the lead paint is being remediated in there and we don't have an opportunity for it to peel again, uh, we'd like to investigate those possibilities. So that's what we'll be doing um, moving forward. Um, Mark, you want to do a quick capital projects update? Sure, thank you, Travis. Um, work is moving forward uh, at both Vernon Hills and at Libertyville High School. Um, with our, at here at Vernon Hills with our classroom additions. Um, in Area A, which is the classroom wing, uh, we are moving forward still with uh, electrical uh, plumbing and HVAC roughing. We have the completed the uh, temporary enclosure and tested the heating today, so we can proceed with um, forming for the uh, floor topping and hopefully we can pour that by the end of the week in area A. Um, area C for the gym area, gym addition out front of the school, uh, the piers uh, were successfully installed uh, to hold the north, north wall structure. Um, so with that being done, uh, we are moving forward with forming the rest of the foundation work uh, so we can pour the, uh, the rest of the concrete for the foundation and they started installing uh, the uh, masonry block, which will be the interior wall of the building, so we started that process. Um, over at LHS, a uh, big step, the deck, the concrete floor for the multi-purpose gym was poured on Friday, so those of you at LHS probably saw a lot of trucks running through the, through the property uh, on Friday, and so um, with that being done, we can move forward with a lot of uh, 
a lot of things going on this second floor with that deck. Um, uh, as well, we're ongoing with um, the electrical, the plumbing, and the HVAC roughing, and we actually started uh, framing walls in the dance studio. Wow. Yes, please. That's great. Excellent. Um, so apparently there are some inaccurate rumors that started in one of our communities about the fact that there is uh, peeling lead paint in the new swimming pool and so that is not true. Somehow that got started out on um, social media and that uh, the pool is going to be closed down over winter break to remediate lead paint in the swimming pool. So we just want to make sure that the community knows there is no lead paint in the new swimming pool and uh, the pool uh, will be closed down for a bit over the winter holiday uh, to continue to work on punch list items um, in the swimming pool. So, uh, you know, we'll be communicating through, uh, Mr. Woods, the athletic director, will be communicating with the coaches and uh, the swim team uh, members on that. So, uh, if you heard that, and I don't know if you've heard those rumors, but we've heard those. So, if you heard those rumors, you can help us dispel uh, those rumors uh, moving forward. And uh, the last thing uh, I have, and then we've got uh, one other on the regular agenda is Freedom of Information uh, request. We had a FOIA <coughs> commercial request received 11-12-2019. The response deadline was 12-12-2019. 12, 12, uh, the requester was Star Hayes, college counselor at Hello College, One Bit America Plaza, Suite 1010, Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. The information requested was the directory information for all current 9th through 11th grade students and their guardians. I would appreciate um, I would appreciate an electronic copy of this information with the following data points: parent student name, address, phone number, parent email uh, address, student grade level. Uh, Brian Kelly did the follow up and responded on 12/5, 2019, approximately half an hour to uh, respond to that quest request. Uh, second for and, and just a follow up on that one, okay. um, none of that information was sent Thank you. for that FOIA requester. So um, in the FOIA request we get a lot of them and we follow what we have to, but none of that information was sent. So I just wanted to follow up on that. And that's because of the confidentiality of the student information, right? Okay. All right, uh, FOIA request to receive mm -hmm. on 11-15-2019. The response deadline was 11-22-2019. Requester Katie Cosentino from Architectural and Ornamental Iron Workers, Local 63-2525 Lexington in Broadview, Illinois. Um, requested certified payroll and contract information for the permanent fence installed at Libertyville High School located at 708 West Park Avenue in Libertyville, Illinois. The uh, contractor is Northern Illinois Fence. Um, the requester would appreciate the information in a PDF format. Dan Stanley did the follow-up, responded on 11-21-2019, and the time spent on that request was about an hour and a half. And the last thing on the superintendent's report tonight, it, oh, so, to bring on. so just a question on uh, FOIAs, or maybe just an alteration going forward. Can you just put denied or, you know, fulfilled? or partially fulfilled, and if it's partially fulfilled, maybe just sure. a little bit. Yes. It, it would just, because I had that exact, I, I saw that and I'm like, okay, I know by only half an hour you probably denied it. I was hoping you denied it. <laughs> so thank you for that question. Yes, we can, we can add in there what was, because there are some things I'll ask a bunch of things, yeah. that, you know, uh, directory information, some things we can share, some things we can't, so we can add in what we sent out. I appreciate it, thank you. <coughs> And the last thing on the superintendent's report tonight, we just want to remind the community again that the board do, does the yeoman share of its work, excuse me, in our two committees, which are the program and personnel committee, generally meets at 5.30 on committee uh, meeting night, and then uh, the facilities and finance committee uh, usually meets, um, you know, right after that meeting. So uh, again, the board does all of its work. So as we go through the agenda tonight, tonight and the board votes on items, uh, we want the community to always know that the board has spent significant time in committee and talking uh, on the issues that they're going to vote uh, on, oftentimes asking questions and clarifications uh, to ensure that um, they've done their due diligence before um, they vote on activities. And as always, 
uh, we would invite you to come to the committee meetings where the board does that work uh, because the discussions are always good uh, and they're, uh, the more complex the issue, the more complex our discussions are and the board does a great job. So Jim, with that said, back to you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, <coughs> speaking of things that was uh, that have been reviewed in committee, we have the uh, consent of the vote agenda next. So I will need a motion in a second. Yes. If, if you have things to do, I'm sure you do. Feel free so to, uh, you know, just waiting for me that they were looking at me and I'm not catching it. Yeah. I think they have to stay until like, we clean up. We're here for a class, right? There's a whole group of students here. We'll take a picture with you guys when we get done. Yeah, when we get Give your extra credit. They did their work. Okay, <clears throat> back to the uh, consent vote agenda. Thank you for reminding me of that. Need a uh, motion and a second for that. I motion to approve the consent vote agenda as listed. Okay, any uh, comments or questions? No, vote no, please. Babson. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Hassel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Okay, that motion passes. I will now turn this over to the chair of the Program and Personnel Committee, which just so happens to be me. So uh, we'll, we have the uh, uh, first reading of uh, 17, is it, board policies um, that we reviewed in some detail in our committee meeting earlier this evening. Uh, this is a first reading, so this is just an acknowledgement of the changes in these policies. Next month we will be voting to adopt these. So. Um, I need a uh, motion and a second to uh, adopt these for the first reading. No. no. no? Oh, we don't. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Never mind. Easy. Rookie mistake. <laughs> um, so just an acknowledgement of those those 17 uh, items. So that concludes the. Uh, Jim, just an overview of the 17 board policies. So we did review these in depth during our uh, committee meeting. Um, most of these policies are being updated in regards to legislative changes that were that went into effect um, when the governor signed um, some public acts at the end of August. Some of them were immediate, um, and some um, are effective January 1. Our board policies may lag some of the legislative, um, you know, public acts and the compiled statutes, but we will always follow, even if our board policies aren't updated yet, we will follow um, any legislation. So, um, but we're right on track with uh, getting these into place um, for the second reading in January. Yeah, thank you. Um, we did have one clarification that we were uh, recommending, so if anyone ha else has any other comments or questions, make sure we uh, get those uh, communicated before next month so that we can vote on those to adopt them. Okay, that concludes the program of personnel. I will turn it over to Facilities and Finance Committee Chairman Huber. Great, thank you. Uh, we did meet earlier. We talked about many different items. We have three action items on the main board report. Uh, earlier, we had more in-depth conversations about CapEx. Thanks to Mark for that. We did have more conversations about the property tax relief grant that the state of Illinois gives to some communities, unfortunately, it won't be coming to our community. And then we did talk about the following three items, the first of which was a resolution to designate the preparation of the tentative budget for fiscal year 2021. And this resolution, in essence, uh, signs our assistant director. I always screw up your title, where are you? I like to see, you're the CFO, you're, the, money guy. you're the guy. So they, they, Dan Stanley, to prepare our 2021 budget, the resolution has been presented to members of the board. I'm looking for a resolution as such. I move to designate Dan Stanley uh, authority to prepare the tentative budget for fiscal year 2021. Second. No questions on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Call. Carmichael. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. All right. Second. Uh, item 5B, we are going to talk about potentially in January. Yeah, we so. put it on there because it was very new, because we backed back. We didn't know if we would have something. Yeah, we don't have it. 
you know, again, for the public's information, the state of Illinois has a school maintenance project grant that we will actually most likely qualify for, and Dan will present more information to us in January. So we'll table that to So we'll table that to then. Uh, final item on the finance and facilities is uh, learning spaces furniture update approval. I'm sure our principals will enjoy this one. Uh, so, Dan, you want to briefly let the public know what's going on? Yeah, so in the fall, Building Administration conducted a survey on the status of the learning spaces in both buildings. Now, to be clear, the learning spaces we are defining as the spaces in which students are sectioned or um, assigned for the, a period of the day. There are many other rooms that students and staff are in during the day uh, that are not included on this list that may also need attention at some point in the future, but for the, the scope of this was really look at those learning spaces. Uh, so the building did a great job of looking at that, then we analyzed that data and found that about 52% of the rooms need some or all new furniture. Um, Vernon Hills had 26 spaces needing attention, LHS had 79. Um, of those, uh, 86 spaces <coughs> really required uh, furniture. Updated furniture would help those spaces. Um, the remaining 19 spaces require more than just furniture, or furniture won't really have any impact on that room. It's, they, those rooms require renovation, particularly science labs. There's four science labs here. There's about uh, I think seven or eight at, at LHS. There's foods labs, um, art rooms, things of that nature that that require more advanced, more planning, and something that we can't accomplish this fiscal year. However, those things are going to be part of our capital planning in future years. But in terms of what could we do for this fiscal year, uh, it was can we do something with those 86 rooms? Um, so we had the data and really spent the last I'd say month and a half kind of talking and seeing what can we do. We, you, it's, theoretically you could do this, but can you actually do this? And I think both buildings are willing to step up to the plate and do this because I think they see the impact this furniture could have on the learning environment or what I could say is the adverse effect that the current furniture is having on that learning environment right now. Um, and so I think both buildings are excited to move forward. With that, in terms of cost, the 86 rooms, we are estimating at about $1.5 million. Uh, that, that's based on you know, really kind of the needs of each room, but when you add it all together, it's about $17,500 per room, which matches what I've experienced when looking at furniture or renovations that I've done over the years. Uh, so that number makes sense to me. Um, the, the 19 rooms for renovations will cost significantly more than that. In future years, we don't really know how much it costs, but you could have a range of a few million dollars, uh, maybe two to five, depending on what happens in those rooms, but we would space those out and schedule those out um, as we can do them relative to what's going on with summer school and just the building's uh, capacity at that time. So where we at right now, um, our plan and our recommendation is for the board to authorize and approve us to to make $1.5 million for the replacement of the furniture in these 86 rooms um, that we will accomplish before the end of June 2020. Um, we, it's funny, my, my memo says that no later than June 30th, 2019, which already passed, it's June 2020. Um, but the, the initial plan would be to submit uh, is in order as big as we can before the end of the calendar year and uh, try to schedule a delivery for as much as we can handle on spring break. Um, this is a good time of year to order furniture because everyone orders furniture during the summer. This is a good time of year, so we're looking at all of those things. Um, yeah, that's all I, that's all I think. I and uh, just a question, when we talk about furniture, uh, we're not talking about the kind of furniture that we all have when we went to school. We're not talking about 30 desks in a classroom, six rows of five desks, or five rows of six desks, correct? Absolutely. I don't know if Tom or John want to talk about what the furniture is, but it, it's cool. So just so the public understands, when we talk about learning spaces, what that means and what the furniture looks like in, in the classrooms. Right, in, um, depending on when one went to high school, um, the model of instruction might have been 
um, very much the teacher transmitting information to students and students sitting stationary, um, sort of being asked to listen and sort of memorize the information um, that was there to kind of perform on tests later on. And while certainly that um, to some degree still happens, what we have uh, developed over the last um, several years is much more active learning environments. Um, and we really want our um, learning spaces to, we want the learning needs or the learning activities that the teachers create to benefit students to drive the space. We don't want the space to drive the learning needs and what the school and the, the, the teachers can do. So really what we're looking to do is uh, create furniture that is malleable and that is uh, multi-use and can be quickly um, set up to be whole class instruction or to be in group <coughs> instruction or set up for um, kind of individual work. Um, we like learning to happen everywhere in the space, so that includes um, making sure that uh, we have projection and presentation capabilities in multiple areas of the classroom and not just in one single focal point. Um, and we want the furniture to be uh, comfortable for students and to be able to be used for technology that we have today that many of the desks that were purchased in, even in like the early 1990s um, did not accommodate for. Um, so both John and his building leadership team, the Libertyville High School um, instructional leadership team, we've been looking at other high schools, we've been looking at our student needs, we've been working with our teachers to talk about what their instructional needs are, and we've been identifying uh, furniture designs that will help um, really um, continue to build upon the great legacy that we have of learning in our, in our schools and allow our teachers to do even more creative and uh, interactive types of learning experiences with all students. So if we use the term modular, that would be something people understand. So you're able to move the furniture around yeah. to support the learning that's going on in the classroom. Absolutely. And so that supports our daring mission, right? And puts us, continues to put us in line with where, um, kind of at the tip of the spear of where the field is moving uh, in terms of the involvement of students in, in many different ways in the learning process. That'd be correct, yes. right? And then Dan, we're gonna have a lot of furniture coming out of those classrooms. So what happens to all of that furniture? Yeah, we're currently right now planning an offsite storage option for those. We haven't exactly settled on as a warehouse in this in this area or something something else, but we're really narrowing that down. So it's really when the new furniture comes in, we will to redirect that old furniture to an offsite storage temporarily, really, so we can turn around and donate it to another school that, that could use that furniture as quickly as possible. And we've had great success with doing that with classroom furniture, and we anticipate being able to do that this time as well. So, and I think also what gets lost in this, and you said it a couple times, Tom, is this is also a reinvestment in our teachers. It's making the classroom a much better environment for the kids to learn, which ultimately makes them you know, more successful teachers, and I'm sure feel you know, much better about that, that environment. So, you know, that sometimes gets lost in this. We're not only reinvesting in the kids by giving them furniture, but we're also reinvesting in the, the teacher. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a huge point, because... I mean, right, and there were a lot of things um, when I was a classroom teacher that I might have wanted to do, but because of the design of the space, I couldn't do it. Um, and I knew it would have benefited students and I knew it would have made the lesson more engaging and maybe the learning more powerful, but sometimes the environment drives the instruction that you can do. And what we found is that by changing um, the ability for us to um, easily and quickly um, kind of redesign the space from one class to the next or from one act to have multiple activities during that lesson, um, just really enhances the efficacy of we hire such talented teachers who have such great ideas. This is giving them really um, even more of the tools they need to be responsive to student learning. Thank you. And we've had two separate tours of spaces that have been renovated with new furniture. And I know that we were all very excited to see the type of learning that can take place when the physical space doesn't dictate the limits of the instruction. And uh, we're very pleased to have this presented before us today. Yeah, that's a great point because this, this isn't just something that we're just sort of taking a 
a hard right here. We're, we're, we've looked at this over years, we've piloted this in, in a number of areas and to some great success and, and really know that this is something that really impacts positively what goes on in yeah, the Yeah, this is a lot more than buying a new living room couch to replace an existing living room couch. And I'm uh, excited for the community to sort of embrace the fact that when we're replacing furniture, it's not kind for kind. We're really moving the learning a great deal forward uh, by this investment. And one other thing that phase two of this project, as Dan mentioned, will be going back and looking at totally gutting and rehabbing the science labs and some food labs uh, and uh, some art space at, at both of the buildings, uh, which will be a more involved uh, process, as Dan mentioned, and will take a little bit more more time to do that. So we'll be back to you at some point in the near future to uh, bring those areas up to you know, high standard as well. Any other questions? So based upon the needs of the classrooms and the impact new furniture can have on the learning environment, the administration is recommending approval of $1.5 million to spend on updating the furniture in the 86 classrooms this fiscal year, fiscal year 2020, as presented. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Further discussion? All right. Essel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Awesome. Aye. Thank you. I'm excited about that. Thank you all. Any other? Yeah. yeah. Any other things? Dan, you got anything else for us? All right. We back to the president. You. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, next up on the agenda, special ed district of uh, Lake County. Real quick, I don't know how many of you happen to catch the article in the Tribune the Sunday before Thanksgiving, but there's an investigative report on special education, particularly having to do with the use of isolated timeouts. And from that came um, ISB implemented an emergency regulation prohibiting the use of isolated timeouts in um, physical restraints uh, and until you know further notice. And so, so that sort of adds to the situation. Um, that we already had going on, uh, complicated and uh, situation at CEDAW. Um, I was not able to go to the meeting on Wednesday, but Pat went, and we were anticipating a significant public comment, which I, the meeting went to 11 o'clock at night, so I said there were over 20 people that gave uh, and, and the significant portion of that comes from uh, the dissatisfaction of the teachers' union. They, um, following their notice to remedy, which I told you about last, uh, after our last meeting, at CEDAW, um, they followed that up by conducting a vote of no confidence in the last couple of weeks. So, so that battle continues, and um, Pat will be able to give us more information on that when he is uh, back with us. But it did, uh, the governing board did come up with a statement at the end of that meeting to you know, give to the public, just expressing um, how much they take this seriously, how much they respect the teachers, how diligently they're trying to work through this, and they are looking for even more participation from the leadership, particularly from the union leadership, to come to some kind of remedy so that they can all work together and bring this uh, difficult situation to a place of peace and calm them. But it's it's challenging, and it will continue to be so, I think, as well. And and I don't I wish I had more for you, but Pat will. A little bit more yeah, you. I think Pat will be able to do a little bit more uh, report because he was there for yeah. the whole time. And Karen's in a great summary again. Um, Kelly Hardwick, our director of special, special education, and Pat and I did a debrief uh, the day after the meeting. And so, um, one of the things the board also indicated is, you know, they're, they're supportive of everyone there. Okay, so I think uh, Pat's comment was <clears throat> because he had a you know, a, a relative a narrow view of, of the issues, just because Karen's been way more involved uh, than Pat has, then uh, as they went through the whole meeting, he clearly understood why the administration has taken some of the steps in raising expectations for staff and then holding staff accountable uh, for those <coughs> expectations, uh, and then the other side of the issue. So I think part of the challenge was uh, of the statement was to issue support that you know of course the board is concerned about everybody and they want the you know staff to be happy happy and healthy and safe and they want the kids to be happy and healthy uh, and safe 
uh, and, and moving forward. But within that, there are still expectations for things that have to be done within a legal framework um, moving forward. So I think the board did a great job with their statement. I'm sure Pat was a, an active participant in helping create that uh, statement. Uh, but it was a good statement from the board, and I think they're asking everybody to come forward and be part of the solution, right? Easy to kind of identify the issues now. What are we going to do jointly to solve the problem? So, yeah. So in that sense, it seems as though some progress was made, apparently. And I haven't talked to Pat, so that's great. Thank you. So, great. Thank uh, next up, uh, Illinois Association of School Boards. I just wanted to give a brief statement. Uh, following the uh, November meeting, we had our uh, delegate assembly, and I, to the best of my ability, uh, represented District 128 at that delegate assembly. Over 400 uh, school districts across the state were represented. Uh, and in that assembly, uh, one of the things that we do is we vote uh, on resolutions, which are basically position statements that the Illinois Association of School Boards then goes uh, uses to support or uh, not support legislation as it uh, as it comes up in uh, down in Springfield. Um, there was one relatively controversial one for a second year this year uh, regarding uh, giving school boards the option of allowing teachers and staff to be armed to, to actually carry uh, and or have uh, uh, guns uh, with them in the school. Um, I know this was a concern of, of some folks and uh, just wanted to uh, reiterate that so voting for this resolution would have been voting for arming teacher, uh, allowing school districts to arm teachers. Uh, it was, um, the vote, final vote tally was 198 in favor and 249 against. So this, for the second year in a row, did not uh, pass and was not uh, <coughs> accepted as part of their, uh, their position. So um, just wanted to, to confirm that. I know we had some, uh, some community members concerned about that uh, as well as some of us. So um, other than that, it was, a, it was a great meeting. So that's all for the Illinois Association of School Boards. Uh, anything else for the? Uh, Can I give the, just a super fast update on the District 128 Foundation Board as the sure. liaison? I just want to mention that there is, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, the District 128 Foundation uh, supports innovation grants for teachers and a student in need fund for students both at Libertyville and Vernon Hills High Schools. And the initiative that they're working on, that we are working on now, is an alumni directory. So all alums of Libertyville and Vernon High Schools will be receiving postcards, um, and it will be part of an initiative to publish an alumni directory. So. Uh, Anybody in the community that would like to participate, please, please look for that. Okay, great. Anything else? Okay, can we have a uh, motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye.